What's up everyone and welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Genesis G80. Let's dive right in. Six different trim options heading your way for the 2024 G80 three of which per engine option, and the base 2.5T starts you off at 55,350, a base trim, 55,000. Let that sink in, working all the way up to the top of the 3.5, Sport Prestige, $74,000. Engine options, those first three, the 2.5 engines will be a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 300 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque, Opting for that bigger engine will get you a 3.5 liter, hence 2.5 and 3.5. Twin turbo V6, 375 horsepower, 391 pound-feet of torque, so you do get noticeably more power, although 300 horsepower on the base engine is no slouch. Both pair with an 8-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive is standard across the board. MPGs, that uh, 2.5 liter will get you 22 city, 33 highway, not bad at all. And that V6, you will suffer significantly on MPGs. Only 16 in the city, but you still manage to get 25 on the highway. For the next section, I just want to let you guys know, here at Ben's Car Reviews, I started bringing the most accurate and relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep moving. Let's check out the pictures now of this G80 while we go through the main features. Looking at this G80, no doubt luxury is the motive behind it. The body lines, the G Matrix grille, the fastback side profile style, the chrome wheels, and the Bentley-esque Genesis badge easily separates this from the crowd. Genesis models across the board share these vital features to let them stand out against all the comp competition out there. A Genesis on the road holds your attention longer than other models such as you know, the every other day Mercedes-Benz, at least for me anyway. I'm digging the split two-line headlights and taillights on these Genesis models. I think they found a you know a really good way to be unique without looking over the top or stupid as it you know there kind of is a fine line there about going too far i think they've done a good job standard all-wheel drive across the board is the only change for 2024 which means genesis must be probably pretty happy with the product they're producing 18 inch wheels on the 2.5 and 19 inch on the 3.5 are standard and that 3.5 sport prestige offers you the stunning five spoke 20 inch exclusive alloy wheels that Genesis really likes to show off in their pictures. 11 different color options for 2024, six of which being on the darker side, dark shades of green, blue, gray, red, and black, but you do get two variations of white and a couple of those colors are only available in the top trims. The 2.5 Sport Advanced trim gets you 19 inch alloy wheels. The 2.5 Sport Prestige gets you sport performance uh, look, 19 inch alloy wheels, and black brake calipers plus a host of interior features. A 3.5 Sport gets you controlled suspension with road preview for the most comfortable ride possible. And that 3.5 Sport Prestige on the outside gets you all everything, kind of the top features we've talked about so far. Those great 20 inch wheels that I just mentioned. And you also add rear wheel steering, which is obviously a super unique and cool touch. Dual exhaust tips on all these trims give it a more luxury and sport look. I like the design element near the front fenders to break up the solid color of the side profile and it mimics the split designs of the lighting. The rear duckbill spoiler, the near duckbill spoiler, really completes the look coming down that back window. You need a shark fan antenna on top. The G80 is 196.7 inches long, 57.7 inches tall. The long length definitely gives it an elegant luxury look. You get a 17 gallon fuel tank on the 2.5s and a 19 gallon on 3.5s and the powertrain limited warranty is a 10 year 100,000 mile. When choosing the best bang for your buck, I'm picking the 2.5 advanced. I don't see the need for the faster engine, certainly the desire, but not the need, as well as not having the need for every interior option available. The advanced will bump me up quite a bit with standard features, which I'll mention next, and I'll be able to get a wonderful G80 without shelling out anywhere close to as much money as I possibly could. This model isn't cheap, obviously, so I think the 2.5 advanced is the way to go, and if you want more, then go for it. Interior shots now. Looking at this interior, first impressions aren't stellar for me. Yes, this is obviously a stylish interior offering a lot, but for these prices, I want a jaw-dropping design, and this feels too mainstream for me. I also just don't like the tablet style infotainment setup as we see here. Let me know what you thought, what your thoughts are on that, if I'm the only one who thinks of this. Overall, I mean, it's nice, but it's boring. 2.5T, advanced on the inside, gets you matte finished wood trim, 
ventilated front seats, power rear sunshades, three zone climate control, power trunk, Lexicon premium audio, and the panoramic sunroof. So you're getting a lot more than that base trim if you opt for the advanced. Another reason why it's the best bang for my buck. The 2.5 Sport Prestige inside offers wireless charging, sport aluminum trim, leather seats, and a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. 3.5 Sport offers the same as the 2.5 Sport, and the major differences in the trims is that upgraded engine. And the 3.5 Sport Prestige adds on the most desirable features with Napa leather, microfiber suede headliner and pillars, and carbon fiber trim with a 12 inch heads up display. Lexicon Premium Audio is also on the 3.5T. Available features consist of matte wood finish, panoramic sunroof, and digital key, like I mentioned. You get an ergonomic center console with tempered glass and a shift by wire rotary controller. You get five drive modes and paddle shifters for an exhilarating ride. You get a nearly completely customizable and large 14 inch, 14 and a half inch infotainment setup with Apple CarPlay Android Auto Standard. Yes, I don't like the design, but it's still a nice large screen and as mentioned when explaining the trim options you can get the 12.3 inch 3d digital gauge instrumentation cluster to accompany that big 14 and a half inch screen as well you get a whopping 13.1 cubic feet of storage in the trunk um, that is sarcasm that's not a lot of room but hey good enough for a car like this Numerous standard driver's assist safety and technology features, including surround view monitor, lane keep assist, and remote start parking assist. Overall, I think this interior is well done, but I want a far more unique design for these price points. The outside is so eye-catching, and the inside needs to match that. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a luxury sedan as this, you're looking at the competitors, the big names that come to mind are Cadillac with the CT5, with BMW with the 5 Series, You've got Mercedes-Benz, of course, with the E-Class. There's a lot out there to really give you a lot of options, but a lot of options does make it more difficult. Uh, if you're digging this design, I think there's no going wrong here. Um, what I say all the time, it really comes down to which design you like the best, inside and out, because a lot of these features across the board are going to be shared with these different brands at these price points. You know, they're going to be somewhat similar to each other. $1,000 here and there when you're already spending $60,000 really doesn't matter that much. It's really going to be what catches your eye the best. And I think Genesis is doing a great job. To go up against those big names, BMW, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, you've got to have something unique. You've got to have something desirable. And it's got to be at least as affordable as those. And I think Genesis is getting it done. And I think, you know, you're not seeing as many of them on the road as these others, but Genesis is still fairly new. People are still getting to know them. And I think the more that people really realize what they're coming with, the more they're going to sell and the more you'll see them kick it around. So hope this video lay things on a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching the Spence Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like. And I'll catch you on the next Ben's Car Review.